Good evening and welcome to the SOC 808 newscast. I'm your host, Yusra Javid. Frosted Flakes, Honey Nut Cheerios, Special K, and Fruit Loops are just some of our favorite cereal brands that we like to chomp on during breakfast time. But have you ever considered who the manufacturer is behind these brands or why we're compelled to pick up one box over the other in the supermarket? Today, we're going to investigate cereal companies in Canada with an emphasis on corporate control. We sent our field reporter, Jusra Yavid, to a busy metro in the downtown core to see what the everyday shopper sees when they enter the cereal aisle. Over to you, Jusra. We're here at the cereal aisle at a Loblaws at Church and Carlton, and today we're going to look at various brands of cereals to see what consumers are picking up first. Oh, look, I see a customer right over there. Let's go see what she has to say. Hey, so can you tell me what you're doing today? I'm just buying some cereal for my kids. Oh, how many kids do you have? I have four kids. Okay, and what kind of brands of cereal are you buying right now? Um, I'm buying Fruit Loops and Frosted Flakes. They're really picky. Why do you specifically pick these brands? Well, they see these on TV and they really like the commercials and it's really colorful. They like the mascots and everything. Okay, is cereal something that you feed your kids often? Yeah, it's a quick snack. It's pretty healthy, I guess. They have it with milk. Oh, you think it's healthy. So do you know what's inside cereal? Um, wheat. Can you read me some of the key ingredients that you see on the side? Um, sugar, whole grain, corn flour, whole wheat flour, and corn syrup. Okay, and what is the percentage of sugar that you see on the Fruit Loops? 10 grams. For every serving? For three, I mean, three quarters cup. Okay, and what about the Kellogg's? Um, 10 grams as well. Wow, that's a lot of sugar, eh? Right yeah. in the morning. Okay. Is that all the cereal you're buying for today? No, actually I was going to get one for myself as well. Okay, so what kind of cereal do you usually like to eat? Uh, I prefer um, Kellogg's. Okay, so um, she's getting Kellogg's right now. Why, why are you getting the Kellogg's brand? Well, again, it's quick and it's pretty healthy. Well, Lucy had to go pick up her kids from daycare, but here's some things to mention that she said. I'd like to say that Lucy is a typical example of a customer walking through the cereal aisle. Firstly, she came to Loblaws in the downtown core, which is a great spot to analyze as it's conveniently placed near a university campus, a gym, a daycare, and several retail buildings. There are about 2,300 Loblaws in Canada, and it's the largest food distributor in the country. Taking a look at the cereal aisle, you know, it's very close to the checkout, and it stands out because of all the bright colors of the cereal boxes, especially the ones that Lucy picked up. Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes, Special K. It seems that there are a lot of different brands and options inside this aisle, but here's the catch. All of them are owned by the same company, Kellogg's. I did a count of how many different boxes of cereals there are and which brands own them, and here's what I found. Of the 135 boxes of cereal in this one aisle, they were all from six companies. 25 from Post, 40 from Kellogg's, 5 from PC, 10 from Nestle, 40 from General Mills, and 15 from Quaker. Please note that the average price of a box of cereal in this aisle was $5.20, with the lowest being $3.50 and the highest being $7.25. Thank you for that detailed analysis, Jusra. I hope our viewers did learn about things to keep an eye out for the next time they're in the cereal aisle at the supermarket. Now joining us is a Skype call all the way from Vancouver, British Columbia, the expert in sociology of food and eating, specializing in cereal branding and manufacturing is Nusi Lewin. Nusi, thank you so much for joining us on this Q&A. Hi, Yusra, thank you so much for having me. As of 2016, the retail value of cereal is a $1.54 billion industry in Canada. Can you explain to me some of the key players in this industry? So Kellogg's, General Foods, General Mills, and Quaker Oats are essentially the oligarchy in this food business. And guess what? They're all American companies. So this is seen as horizontal integration. It's the acquisition of a business operating at the same level of the value chain in a similar or different industry. And it really brings this illusion of choice. We think there are these hundreds of cereals from different companies, but in reality, only four of them are dominating this industry. See, there's this ratio for cereal that CR 491, meaning that four companies own 91% of the market. So then what are some of the dangers of concentrating power into the hands of a few, in particular when profit is in the bottom line? 
This brings barriers to smaller companies for keeping their products in attractive places and selling better quality of products. In that supermarket, there was no mention of smaller brands or organic brands of cereals such as Naturepath because they're one of those companies that didn't sell out to large corporations, which is why they're rarely seen in supermarkets and they're priced much higher. A key benefit for this oligarchy for these companies is the area of pricing as corporate concentration allows corporations to avoid competition and set prices to assure high profitability. In this capitalist economy, highly processed items like cereal have more attractive rates of profit for retailers than foods that have undergone minimal transformations like egg or potatoes, which is why they are advertised and sold so competitively. Why is cereal such a popular food and does it influence North American life? So there's definitely this culture of eating cereal in the morning with milk, and that's supposedly to be, you know, healthy. As mentioned before, all those companies are American companies, and they use these smart marketing tactics like colorful boxes and recognizable mascots and strong advertisements on TV. And they use that with an emphasis on cereal containing wheat and you consuming it with milk. So it has to be healthy and it's friendly. Why wouldn't parents pick it up as a quick snack or breakfast meal? You know, cereal is a pseudo food. It's nutrient poor. It's an edible product with a high amount of fat and sugar and salt. And although it contains calories, it's low in the nutrients that are essential for health. But the technology and business strategy that goes into mass marketing from these powerful brands ignore the fact that it's a pseudo food and allow these companies to dominate their competition with their high costs of mass advertising. That's why smaller brands could never compete with them. What were some clever techniques used that enhanced the sales of cereal? Of course, so nothing that happens in the supermarket is by accident, right? There's this idea of spatial colonization. It's this process that places products in the most visible and effective selling places in the food environment. And in that cereal aisle that was inside that Loblaws, right, it was inside a high traffic area near the checkout and also had a lot of popular brands near the end of the aisle. And this idea is because Companies play, pay huge amounts of slotting fees, so they're able to put the concept of eye level is the buy level, right? They also work to their benefit with consumer mentality, which is why they place more popular brands near the ends of the aisle because they think that we're too lazy to walk into the aisle, so we'll buy whatever's at the end. The other thing to note here is pricing. You know, Juicer mentioned that the medium price was five twenty for a box of cereal, and although price fixing is illegal in Canada, I don't. I don't believe it's coincidental that most of the cereals were within the same means. And what are some of the consequences of corporate concentration? The biggest one I see is the quality of the product being compromised, right? Cereal has this large percentage of both soy and corn, and these changes in the food system have dramatically altered the way we eat. Although eating corn and soy in their whole form can be healthy, they're highly processed and it has links to, you know, obesity and heart disease and type 2 diabetes. And let's not forget that these large manufacturers use genetically modified organisms to grow the soy and the corn. And because because these corporations bring in so much money to the country, you know, the Canadian and American government approve the use of GMO crops for corn and soy, and yet there's no laws that forces these companies to label their boxes to contain that they contain GMOs, right? NaturePath is actually battling the U.S. Supreme Court to force companies to have transparent labeling for GMOs, but at the moment, these companies are allowing us to consume, you know, all these toxic chemicals and highly processed foods without labeling them as such. I guess my last question for you is then what can consumers do to be smarter shoppers when shopping for breakfast items in the grocery store? You know, we can't change the convenience of how we as consumers shop, but we can be smarter shoppers, right? Don't fall for the advertising tactics. Look into smaller brands of cereals that actually hold themselves accountable for the quality of product that they give to you. Realize what you're eating. Look into the, you know, soy content, corn content, sugar content that you're feeding your kids. You know, cereal isn't going to go away anytime soon, but we can control what kinds of cereals that we eat. And that is all the time that we have for today on SOC 808. I'm your host, Yusser Javid, and I'll see you next week when we talk about poultry, what's really inside your chicken. Take care now.